All right, guys, now we're moving on to some new types of angles created by, this time, two chords or two secants, not seconds, secants intersecting inside the circle. Okay, so we need to refer back to that nifty property we learned about in the Prezi to help us solve these wonderful problems. All right, so on the Prezi, we talked about that. Um, the measure of an angle created by two chords or two secants inside the circle has a relationship between the intercepted arcs that are created by the two segments or lines. Okay, but it's a little confusing because technically there's several intercepted arcs, not just two of them. Okay, so when I think about this, you guys, I think of the angles that are either, if it's one of these two angles, so angle BAE or CAD, okay, the intercepted arcs are the arcs that are to the left, or to the right of them, so like these two. Okay, so that could be true for either of these angles. Okay, and the relationship, if you remember, the measure of the angle equals half the sum of the two intercepted arcs. So if you add the arcs that are to the left and to the right of the um, angles, that means, and then divide by two, that means you will get the measure of the angle. Okay, so the same is true if you kind of look at the two angles kind of on the top and bottom. Okay, so this angle right here, the two intercepted arcs this time are the arcs that are above and below this lovely angle. So now will be the two purple arcs, right? Okay, and same thing for the angle below it. Okay, the two intercepted arcs were this angle, angle EAD, are the two purple arcs, so the arcs like above and below. So if you have an angle that's either like facing up or down, the intercepted arcs are going to be the ones that are up or down. If you have angles that are facing right or left, the intercepted arcs are going to be to the left or to the right, if that helps you. And again, the same relationship. The angle equals one half of the sum of the two intercepted arcs. Say what? I know. All right, and then this is the, these are the two examples we're about to solve. Um, but anyway, so we're going to be using this property to help us solve. So let's get going. All right, so this says to find the measure of angle S to the Q to the R. So I'm going to highlight that bad boy right now, right now. Do it. Okay, so that's the angle I'm looking for, and now I need to identify the two intercepted arcs, which since this angle is opening to the right, okay, that means I'm looking for intercepted arcs located to the right and left of this angle. So which two intercepted arcs are located to the right and left of this angle right here? <gasps> you are correct. It is arc S to the R and arc P to the T. Whoa. I know. All right, so this angle will equal the sum of these two arcs add together and then divide by two using that property. All right, let's get going. I'm so excited already. All man, all man. Let's go, let's go. All right, so the measure of angle, let's see if I can zoom in more so you guys can see my wonderful work as I saw. So the measure of angle SQR, so S to the Q to the R equals one half the sum of my intercepted arcs, which are arcs S to the R, so the measure of arc SR, plus the measure of arc P to the T. Whoa, cool beans, right? I know. Let's get going. All right, so now I'm going to fill in my values to help me solve. So this is the angle I don't know, so I'm going to put a little question mark. That's the one I'm trying to find. All right, let's get going. Okay, so the measure of angle SQR equals one half the measure of, the, or the sum of the measure of these two arcs. So let's fill in these bad boys right now. Let's go. So the measure of arc SR is 100 degrees, and the measure of arc P to the T is 32 degrees. That was Fahrenheit be freezing right now. Hopefully not, because I don't like when it's cold. All right, let's keep going. So the measure of angle SQR equals one half of 100 plus 32, which what's 100 plus 32, you guys? Gee, well, of course, you guys are correct. 100 plus 32 is 132. And then I just simply have to multiply one half, which is the same thing as dividing by two. So the measure of angle S to the Q to the R is one half of 32 
um, which that's going to be 66, I'm pretty sure. Let me double check my math. Da, da, da. Yes, 66 degrees. <gasps> and guess what, you guys? That's it. That's all we had to do for that problem. I know, I'm sad too. I really wish this problem would last longer because that was just way too short, you guys. All right, guys, that was fun. But that problem, that problem was a little too straightforward, right? Yeah, I mean, like normal, I agree with you because we like think identically. Um, but anyways, so that was a little bit too straightforward. So the next problem is going to have an extra little teeny tiny step that we're going to have to do. We're still going to have to use this process, but then we're going to have to do it one step further. So get excited for that. All right, guys, let's get started on example two. 